Hello, this is Dr. Sai Prashant and welcome back to Epidemiology Lecture Series. In this lecture, we will discuss the concept of natural history of disease. To begin with the definition, it refers to the course of disease over time unaffected by treatment or progression of a disease process in an individual over time in the absence of treatment. For example, untreated infection with HIV causes a spectrum of clinical problems beginning at the time of zero conversion, that is primary HIV, and terminating with AIDS and usually death. Another example of chronic disease, factors favoring the development of chronic disease often are present early in life, antedating the appearance of clinical disease by many years. For example, of one factor like smoking uh, that might lead to cancer. And this is the timeline of natural history of disease. Uh, there are basically four stages. One is stage of susceptibility, stage of subclinical disease, stage of clinical disease, stage of recovery, disability or death. Now coming to the first stage, stage of susceptibility. In this stage, disease has not developed, but the groundwork has been laid by the presence of factors that favor its occurrence. For example, high serum cholesterol levels increases the probability of development of coronary heart disease and immune suppression increases the risk of developing cancer. So in this case, the factors we consider here are high serum cholesterol level and the other is the immunity. And what are risk factors? factors whose presence is associated with an increased probability that disease will develop later. So basically there are two types of risk factors. One is immutable risk factors. So when we use the word immutable, that means we cannot change or alter them, right? So those risk factors include age, sex, race, family history, and etc. And now coming to the other type of risk factors, susceptible risk factors like smoking, dietary habits, or exercise, etc. Now coming to the second stage, there is no manifest disease, but pathogenic changes have started to occur due to interaction of factors. So we have discussed about the factors in the first stage, right? Like any risk factor. So in this stage, there is no manifest disease, but the pathogenic changes have started. So basically in this stage, the changes are essentially below the level of clinical horizon. So what does it mean? Clinical horizon is an imaginary line above which disease manifests itself through detectable signs or symptoms. Uh, for example, atherosclerotic changes in coronary vessels prior to any signs or symptoms of illness. So basically, these changes begin first and later the signs and symptoms. So this comes under the stage of pre-symptomatic. And now coming to the third stage, stage of clinical disease. So the term itself says clinical disease, right? So in this stage, sufficient end organ changes have occurred along with the pathogenic changes in the second stage so that recognizable signs or symptoms of the disease are present in this stage. Subdivision of this stage is very important for better management of cases and for the purpose of epidemiological study. Let's see an example of this subdivision. A tumor can be classified into three categories. One is localized with regional metastasis and with generalized spread based on the end organ changes or any tissue changes. And now coming to the last stage, that is stage of recovery or disability or death. So if you can see the natural course of any disease, what are the possible outcomes? One can be recovery or it might lead to disability or death. So basically, some diseases run their course and then resolve completely, that is recovery, either spontaneously or under the influence of therapy. And what is disability? Any temporary or long-term reduction of a person's activity as a result of an acute or chronic condition. Let's see an example for all the three terms like recovery, disability and death. Child fully recovered from a diarrheal disease that is recovery or is paralyzed from poliomyelitis that comes under the disability or dies from malaria, death. So now coming to the concept of prevention. It's a very important concept. Uh, basically, uh, there are three types of prevention or we can call three levels of prevention. In simple words, prevention is inhibiting the development of a disease before it occurs or measures that interrupt or slow the progression of a disease. Now coming to the first level of prevention that is primary prevention. So this is the first level of prevention where prevention of the occurrence of the disease. That means we try to prevent the occurrence of the disease in the primary prevention. It includes two measures. One is general health promotion. So when you use the term general, we try to focus on everything uh, from a top view. For example, we provide conditions at home, work and school that favor healthy living. For example, good nutrition, adequate clothing, shelter, rest. These all comes under the general provisions, right? 
So when we come to the second measure of primary prevention, that is specific protective measures. In this case, we are little specific, for example, that include immunizations, environmental sanitation and protection against accidents and occupational hazards. Now coming to the second level of prevention, secondary prevention. So in, in, the, in the primary level of prevention, that is primary prevention, the disease has not occurred. So we are trying to prevent the occurrence of disease. But in case of secondary prevention, the disease has started. So we try to detect them as early as possible and give prompt treatment. With this measure, it is sometimes possible to either cure disease or slow its progression, prevent complications, limit disability and reverse communicability of infectious diseases. Let's see an example. Early treatment of persons with sexually transmitted infection may protect others from acquiring the infection. So in this example, there are uh, two types of prevention. First, we'll talk about the secondary prevention. Secondary prevention for the infected persons because they're already infected. We try to detect them and we, we give treatment, right? That comes under the secondary prevention. But we also give primary prevention for the potential contacts. You know, those people who are healthy, who can come in contact with these infected persons. Okay. So we're trying to give primary prevention for their potential contacts indirectly. Efforts at control of many chronic diseases center primarily around secondary prevention as it is difficult to prevent them completely. As we know, the most common examples are diabetics, diabetes and hypertension. And now coming to the last level of prevention, this level of prevention consists of limitation of disability and rehabilitation where diseases already occurred and left residual damage. Let's see an example for limitation of disability. Early physiotherapy to an affected limb to restore motion and prevent contractures. And what does the word rehabilitation means? In rehabilitation, the focus is on maximal utilization of the individual's residual capacities with emphasis on remaining abilities rather than losses. For example, in case of person who has, uh, who, who has an history of brain injury, exercises to improve a person's speech, language and communication after a brain injury. In this case, we cannot reverse the injury, right? We cannot change the occurrence of brain injury. So with the residual capacities, we try to improve the person's speech, language and communication. So uh, this is basically a tabular representation of all the things which you have discussed right now. So I'll just give one example or I'll just explain the one row or column so that you'll get an idea. For example, uh, uh, if you can see on the top column, the stage of disease, susceptibility, pre-symptomatic, clinical disease and disability. When, I, when we use the word susceptibility, this is something before the occurrence of disease, right? So what happens? What kind of tissue changes happen in this case? It's like pre-pathogenesis. So there are no pathogenic changes in this stage. And what kind of prevention? When I, when I use the word, uh, the disease has not occurred, we always try to prevent it, right? So that comes under the, comes under the primary level of prevention. And what are the modes of intervention? This we have already discussed. In primary prevention, we use two, right? Uh, general health promotion and specific protection. So this is what this table is all about. Thank you.